Hi, my name is Richard Katz. I'm a clinical psychologist. Practice at 9150 Crawford in Skokie. Been there for 12 years already. Um, been practicing since 1980. Got my license in 1981. I don't really focus on one problem because everyone's problem is idiosyncratic. Um, as I explained to my clients, psychotherapy is generic and it's basically a three-step process of calming, self-soothing, followed by problem solving, and encouragement. And I use different techniques to achieve that end. Cognitive behavioral therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, I use outcome measures, um, I use family therapy, I use straight behavioral therapy, and that's how I do treatment. Actually, I work best with people I, I establish a relationship with, and you can tell pretty much in the first session if you're going to establish a relationship. Um, and that relationship is, is key to my understanding of a client. If I can understand their problem, we probably have a relationship going. As long as they feel accurate empathy, then I know we have a relationship. The therapeutic style that guides me primarily is, is just being a good listener and then using the different techniques which I've acquired over 36 years of practice to apply this specific problem. Um, it, it's generic and and that's backed by research. As most therapists, after 10 years of practice, despite what they claim to be doing, are actually pretty much doing the same thing. And then it comes back to those three qualities of calming and soothing, problem solving, and encouraging. Actually, it's rather, it's both it's both reassuring, enjoyable, and at times funny because I have a sense of humor. People find me very easy to talk to and reassuring and very calming. I don't necessarily see myself as very calm all the time, but most people find me very calming and, and, and easy to speak to. And because of that, and because of my accurate empathy, when people speak with me, I understand and they know that I understand what they're talking about. And that's both reassuring and encouraging. I think finding the right therapist occurs through personal contact, typically a phone call, where the therapist and the client can engage around the client's problem. And, and what happens as a result of that is there's a, an emotional response, both on, on the therapist's part and on the client's part. What, what colloquially would be called a click. Um, one of my recent clients said to me, you know, after I talked to you for a few minutes on the phone, I knew you were the guy for me. And that's typically how it goes. Accurate empathy. You have to really understand what the client is saying. And the client has to know that you understand and are not misinterpreting what he, is or, what he or she is saying. And, and then you have that commonality, that common ground, and you can go ahead and solve problems. You have to be approachable, understandable, and human, which I think I am. People, people find me funny. Um, I don't always find myself funny, but people invariably find me funny and easy to talk to. So I, I don't know where it, Typically, I, I like engaging people. I like kibitzing. I kibitz wherever I go. It, I, I like so, I like, you know, I just like that, and apparently it works for me and it works for most people. I should preface this by saying that the average client, well, there isn't an average client. Some people stay with me six, eight sessions. Other people hang around for a couple of years. It depends upon the nature of the problem. Well, let me give a, an example of a recent successful case utilizing several techniques. This 16-year-old girl who had been acting out at home but not at school. The parents were at wit's end, could not control her, were very worried that she would have temper tantrums, hit walls, doors, hit the other kids. And treatment was a combination of an individual session with this young girl who 
I knew immediately <laughs> was acting out because when she filled out the forms, she just was vulgar and inappropriate and accusatory. And I just called her on it. I said, you know, you're really goofing off here. And she smiled and said, yeah. So, so I told her parents to leave the room. I just kind of, I said, okay, so what's the deal here? And, and I immediately established a rapport with her. But, but I'm not here to do therapy. I'm not going to do that. I said, well, fine. Then you could wait in the waiting room. I'll talk to your parents. It required meeting with the parents a couple of times without the kids because they really couldn't enforce limits. And I told them what to do very tutorially. I explained all this kind of stuff that you're going to need to call the police and set up with a social worker because your, your child was actually, I mean, if it was an adult, this would be considered assault and battery, you know, and she's threatening you. Well, they kind of got that idea down and, and, and sort of carried that out. I didn't hear from them for a while. Then they called because things weren't going too well, so well. And I said, I'm just going to deal with the kids. You know, you can go out and have coffee. And I did this structured intervention with the kids where, where the younger child, there were three of them, you know, they said, well, you know, what are you going to sell? I said, it's not my problem, it's yours. What are you going to do? Which kind of threw them back. <laughs> And, and the middle child said, well, you know, at school, the teacher says only one person can talk at, time, talk at a time if they have a talking stick. Said, What's a talking stick? It's anything. I gave her a pencil. And these three kids solved the problem of acting out and fighting. I met with them two times, and then I didn't meet with them again. And I haven't heard from them since. And the, and the parents would always call me when things are going wrong. It's, so in that situation, I used family therapy, I used cognitive behavioral therapy, I used direct tutorial, you know, behavioral intervention. Um, I threw the responsibility on them appropriately. We had fun playing with this, throwing the stick around the room. That's an example of how therapy works. It isn't this preconceived like you see on TV. You know, it's being creative in the moment. And the kids are rather proud of themselves that they solved the problem about using Xbox and whatever else they were doing. The parents are happy too. So that's an example of a fairly short-term intervention. I think I used six, six sessions totally. You know, what I enjoy most about psychotherapy is simply the engagement and the problem solving and the interaction and getting to know people and having fun with it. You know, and, you know there are some terrible things which people go through and you empathize with that. And then through the interaction, you slide on to, so how is it going to be? What, what are you going to, what, what are you going to solve? And you feel like, you're, I feel like I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing something. I'm contributing to people's lives. They're leaving changed in a better direction. And that's rewarding, extremely rewarding.